starting in this chapter and continuing in most of the rest of the chapters as we go forward through this course, we are going to edit video, audio, still images, graphics, and titles. And the editing takes place mainly in the timeline. Because I recorded most of the lessons in the CS6 version of Premiere Pro, and because you're likely working in the Creative Cloud version, I want to point out the differences between the two in terms of how the timelines look and behave. So on the left-hand side here, I've got the CC version, the Creative Cloud version. Here's its timeline down here. And on the right-hand side, I've got the CS6 version. Here is its timeline down here. Here's the header. We've got the Video 1 header and the Audio 1 header. Now, by default, the header opens up in this kind of expanded view. And you get there by opening up this disclosure triangle. So I'll close it now to collapse the view. And I'll expand it again by clicking on that. If I want to expand the view further, I can lift it up like this by hovering between the two tracks and expand it like that. But if I close it down, it won't expand there. I need to open it first and then drag it up and down. You close it back down again. Typically, the reason I do that is because I want to make more precise edits on the audio side. So typically, in the video side, it's not that critical. So on the audio side, I expand it by clicking it, and it opens down like that. And to be able to expand it further, I need to scroll on down here and pull it down. We don't pull it up. The audio side would be pulled down. And here I get a better view of the audio waveform, which is helpful when I make audio edits down here. So that's why I would do that. The process, though, is a little cumbersome because you've got to click this first and then you've got to expand it. In the Creative Cloud side of things, you merely just drag them up and down. So here I just put my cursor between the two tracks and pulled it up and down like that. On the audio side, I'll just pull it up or down, depending. The waveform view is a little bit different over here in the Creative Cloud side. The waveform starts at the bottom and goes up. Over here, it's centered. Now, the centered view is the way waveforms are normally displayed, but it's a more practical way to display it over here because you don't take up as much real estate and you get a better sense of how loud something is this way. So I like the fact that they changed the view to just be one-sided like that. Now over here you see this little yellow line, and over here you see this little white line with the black shadow there. That allows you to control effects. Now the default effect is simply volume. And you can tell it's the default effect by clicking on this little button there. You go to volume and you see that it's highlighted like that. So you're controlling the volume level here. And this is very helpful when you try to control volume from one clip to the next. It's nice to see that. Now, all clips have that option with a little button like this, but you don't see it up here because you've got to expand the view a little bit. To expand the view, I press the plus key a couple times. And then you see a little button appear there. Click it here, you've got the options on the video side of things. But you hardly ever work with effects in the video side here. You typically work with effects up here in the effect controls panel. But on the audio side, you do. So by default, the audio control line is turned on here, and by default, the video control line is turned off. The way you turn it on and off over here is with this little button there. You click on that settings button, and then you can turn on video keyframes if you want, but they're off by default. Over here, the video keyframes are on by default. See the yellow line there? You can pull that down just a little bit by scrolling up here and pulling this thing down just a touch like so. There you can see that yellow line. And they're on by default, and you control them, not by this little settings button over here, but by these little buttons down here. Every track has their own individual control. Over here, it's a full timeline version. I click on this, and I can show the keyframes or hide the keyframes. That's how it works there. So you'll see the difference with these little buttons here versus that little setting over there. You might notice a couple other things. If I click on a clip to select it to make it active, you see how that looks there? Over here, it looks different. It makes it all solid looking like that. Just a little more obvious. I think it's a little better that way. Over here, you see these little triangles in the corner there? Those little triangles indicate that every frame of this clip is being used. When you bring in a clip to the project panel like this, it has a beginning and an end. It doesn't go on forever. When you put it in the timeline like this, you can see the beginning and the end by that triangle. If I trim it, that little triangle goes away. You don't see the triangle anymore now. It goes away because we're not using the entire clip. It just marks the beginning and the end of the full clip. Over here, the triangles are white as opposed to gray. That's the only difference there. On the audio side of things, there's this little mute button here. That means that the track output or the sound is on. Now it's off. Now it's back on again. I'll close this down over here. On the Creative Cloud side of things, you have a mute button which is more of a standard way of doing things. M for mute. Now it's muted. Now it's not muted. You also have a solo option. You click on that, nothing else plays. Everything else is muted except that one. But you can solo multiple tracks. You can have several tracks that are soloed with other guys not playing. Turn that off. The buttons here at the top are clearly different from this side versus that. Here you have several of them. Here you only have three. These two marker buttons kind of duplicate things. You need only one marker button. This is an Encore Chapter button. Over here, there is no Encore Chapter button, but this marker button takes care of both things. You also have this link selection option here, which you don't have over here. A linked selection means that you've got a clip where the audio and the video are linked together. You record a video clip, and you record both video and audio at the same time, and so the audio and the video are linked together, which is normal. But sometimes you want to unlink them when you do some editing. Over here on the CS6 side of things, you need to right-click on a clip 
and go up here and then unlink. It's kind of an extra process. You do it so often, it's nice that this is now available over here as just a button. So I have this clip selected, I click on that, and now they're unlinked. And now they behave independently. So I can drag this little video clip around if I want to relative to this clip down here. Let me zoom out a bit so you can see that. I'll press the minus key a couple of times and you can see they're no longer lined up and they are out of alignment by four seconds. That little guy tells you that. I'll undo that. Control or Command Z a couple of times. Now I can't do Control Z to relink them. I need to select them. So I click on this and then Shift click on the one down there and then I relink them like that. But this little link guy here is very convenient because you unlink and relink clips a lot so that it's right there is helpful. There's this other button here too, but that doesn't really apply to the video editing we're going to do in the next few chapters. This comes down the road when we deal with something called the nested sequence. So there you go. This is a brief rundown on the differences between the two types of timelines. I trust that as you work through the lessons, you won't be thrown off by the little differences between the Creative Cloud side versus the CS6 side.